find the average value of the magnetizing inductance in the flyback converter. So this current is going through here. And you may remember from the previous parts that it looks like this. So during the on time, the current is increasing. And then during the off time, it's decreasing. So it's in CCM, average steady state like this. And what we want to do is find the average value. So the average value here, since it's a triangle wave, it's going to be right at that midpoint of each incline and decline. How do we find that value? Well, there's going to be two different ways we can find that. And we have to put it in terms of things that we know. And specifically, we're going to know either about the input characteristics or the output characteristics. So what we're going to do is put it in terms of the input current first and then the output current. And we'll have two different equations to find this. So let's start in phase one when this switch is on. So we have our current coming from the power supply, going through our inductor, through the switch, and back around. And we also have current coming out of here from the capacitor to the load. So we can look at the current through the input. And that's going to be this current here, I in. So let's draw what that looks like relative to our graph shown on the right. So the input current is going to be exactly the same as the magnetizing current during the switch on part. It's going to follow here, but then after it gets to this point, it's going to actually turn off completely and there won't be any current coming from the input side. So after that, it's going to go all the way down to zero and stay there until this part the end of the period, and then it would go back up and follow this part again until it hits this point, then it would go back down to zero. All right, so the green is what we would be following. So if we want to figure out the average input current, we have to look at the waveform. And we see it's increasing during the switch on time but it's, a, it's linearly changing. This is a little bit hard to calculate. But if we're smart, we can see that this triangle, and these are supposed to be even, I just can't draw things that are even. This triangle here, if we take that and we flip it down here, it would kind of cut the icing off the cake and it would move it to the side so it would make everything even. So let's move that over and we would get the equivalent of this waveform. So it would just be going at the average value of the magnetizing inductance and then go back down to zero. This is actually pretty easy to calculate for the average. So that's why we're doing that. So the average charge here would be dt, because it's on for that amount of time, times the average value of the magnetizing current and then we would divide that all by t because that's over the full period, which is zero to t. So this would be the average value of the input current. And we see that these t's cancel out here. So we'll be left with this expression. And since we're interested in finding the average value of the magnetizing inductance current, we can just move the equation around. So we want to find IM, average value, and that is equal to the average value of the input, this is an I, divided by the duty ratio. And there you go. But you say, it's far too easy. Let's do something more complicated. Okay, let's now make a relationship between the average inductor current value and the output current. To do that, we need to look at phase two when the switch is off. And that means that the current of the inductor is still flowing in this direction. And because current is coming out of this dot, it has to be going into this dot. And we have current going in this direction through the diode and also through the output current loop here. So let's set up some relationships first. The first one's gonna be from the transformer itself. So we see that the I1, which is defined here, is actually going in the opposite direction as the current flow 
in phase two. So actually it would be a negative I one. And that's going to be equal to, this one is with the current direction, so I two. And because of the transformer, this is going to be N. And N is the turns ratio defined here. So this is the relationship between the current on the primary and secondary side of the ideal transformer. And we can define one more thing. We want to look at this node and we want to follow Kirchhoff's current law. And I2 and ID are the same. So we're just going to define I2 here. And that's going to be equal to IO plus IC. So first what we're going to do is put this into here, substitute it in. So we'll give negative I1, the primary side current, N times IO plus IC. We are looking in terms of averages. So let's take the average of all of these, of this equation, and turn it into the average form using the angle bracket notation. So the negative is going to be still in the front. I1 here. The n is just an n value, so that stays out in the front. The average of this is going to be the sum of those two averages. So it's going to be the average of IO here plus the average of the capacitor current. But we know that we are in average steady state, so that means that the average current through a capacitor must equal zero. So that means that this one will be equal to zero and we're just left with this relationship. So negative I1 as defined in the figure here equal to N and the average output. Now what? What do we do? We have an I1. Let's look at I1 relative to this plot here. So we know the magnetizing inductance current is going up and down because it's in CCM. And we know that during the first phase, I1, which is the current on the primary side of the ideal transformer, that's actually going to be zero because there's no current going through there. Then when the switch is off and the current flows through the transformer, then it's going to be exactly the same. So it would jump up to the same value and be the same value as the uh, magnetizing inductance. Then to go back down to zero and do the same cycle again. If we look at this again and we do cut off the frosting on the top, we'll see right at the average value, this IM value here, we'll see that this area, this frosting, can go down to the bottom side. I guess it's making a cake, sure. And it will make it nice and even and flat. So this waveform we just drew in blue is actually negative I1, which is a little weird, but it's just because of the way that we defined I1. So this would be a negative I1, this waveform. So now let's take the average of that. So negative I1, take the average, the negative can stay in the front. This value will then be equal to D1 minus D times t, and average im divided by t. t's will cancel, and we'll be left with this expression. We see that this value is the same as this one, so we can equate those two, and then we will get n. Average value of i out, 1 minus d, average value of i m. We want to put i m by itself, the average value that is, we will get this. So if you know the output characteristics based on the characteristics of your converter, you can equate the output current, N and D, and figure out the average magnetizing current. To summarize, if we want to figure out the average inductance value, magnetizing inductance current value in CCM, 
then we can either look at it from the input side. If we do that, we know the input current and we have to find D. We can divide those two and get the average current value here. Or we can look at it from the output side. In that case, we follow this equation and we need to know the output current, the turns ratio, and the duty ratio. Then we can find this value. So then we'll be able to use this average value to look at, for example, the critical inductance value for the flyback or do other types of calculations.